All right, so I want you guys to kind of crowd around this. You don't have to look, about, look at them. Look at this stuff. This comes up once a month. What do we call this right here? We call this the Lord's table. We have another, what do we call the act of eating and drinking from the Lord's table? Communion. Communion. Communion is a good thing. So we have two different things up here. So Casey, what do we have? What are the two different parts of communion that we have up here? We have bread. We have the bread. And then Ellie, you want to take the lid off of there? What do we have over there? What is it? Drinks, yeah, it's not, it's, usually we use grape juice, some churches use wine. So we call that the bread and the cup, the bread and the cup. And these represent two different things. So what, do, what, do the, what does the bread represent? His body. His bo whose body? Jesus' Jesus's body, right? And what do we do, what do we do to the bread? Do you know? We, well, before we eat it. Do you guys know what we do to the bread before we eat it? You see me do it all the time? You break it in half. We break it in half. Why do we, why do we break the bread? That's kind of violent. Is it because I'm angry and I need to take it out on some bread on a Sunday morning? What's going on? Why am I breaking that bread? What do you think? Do you have an idea? No. Do you have an idea? What do you, why? Because it's his body broken for you. So this is representing Jesus' body, right? Broken for us. I'll never forget the Sunday I didn't have some bread, and I called, I said, Scott, are you still on your way to church? Bring me some bread. And he grabbed me bread from the freezer. That was the, I couldn't break it. It was, it was like a brick. <laughs> I had to get some work out there. But when we break the bread, it is a sign to the whole congregation, our whole communion of saints, that Christ's body was broken on the cross for us. But then what does the cup represent? What, is the, what does the grape juice look like a little bit? What is it supposed to represent? Ellie, what do you think? Blood. His blood. His blood. And what happened to his blood on the cross? Uh, it was, um, oh, no, no. It didn't stay on the inside of his body, right? Yeah, it was, it was pouring out. It's pouring out. And his blood comes in and is poured out for us. Now, I don't take a goblet and pour it out, but I do raise up this, and I say this is his blood poured out. Why? For the forgiveness of your sins. Now, we do have some rules about who can partake in communion. And we have a rule that in our church that you have to have, you have to be a Christian because you can't be a Christian or not a Christian and come up and, and eat the bread in the cup. That's, that's just wrong. But to be a Christian, to partake in the bread in the, in the cup, you have to make a confession of your faith to session. So you have to come in front of us and say, I am a Christian. We go, okay, you are a Christian. You have Jesus Christ in your heart. You can now partake in communion. So right now, Casey, you can't do that because you haven't made a confession yet, but someday you will. But I know like Ellie, you have made a confession to session and you can't. So I just wanted to kind of walk through this. So we, what are some things we do before we do communion? We say a prayer. We ask a blessing, like if you're eating a, a meal at your home, you sometimes say a blessing, hopefully. But we also recite the Lord's Creed, the Apostles' Creed together. So we make a statement of faith as a communion. And then we prepare our hearts. And the Bible tells us we need to make sure our heart is right with God before we eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So even if, like, we're angry about God or we haven't forgiven somebody. The Bible says we need to go do that first before we do this because it's really important that we treat this holy and respectful. So do you have any other questions about communion? I just kind of wanted to walk you guys through it a little bit. Yeah. Well, I was doing Sunday, Sunday this morning. I learned about how, how Jesus ate food and how he died on the cross. Right, and this is where the very first communion was at the Last Supper when Jesus took that bread and he broke it and he took the cup and he poured it out and he said, I want you guys to eat this and I want you to keep eating it and keep drinking it until when? Until he comes again. So there will be a day we'll no longer do communion because we're going to have the biggest party in heaven and we're going to be doing it together. It'll be much more than this. All right, let's pray. 
Dear Lord, we just love you, and we thank you for this wonderful gift, this blessing of communion, the sign and seal that strengthens our faith, that brings us into a better unity together. And Lord, I just pray that you help us understand it more. In your name, amen. All right, thanks, boys and girls. Go have a seat.